when they're moving around. Um, super common, uh, you know, commonly seen in the knees. People tend to associate it, they think of it, in association with conditions like arthritis. Um, however, it's not actually quite as clear-cut as, as people seem to think. What I mean by that is that crepitus, these sorts of snaps, crackles, and pops that people experience are super, super common uh, in all knees, including both knees that have symptomatic arthritis, meaning they have maybe some pain, um, and even in people who have no pain and completely normal, uh, you know, it tends to make them a little bit uncomfortable. Um, in general, people have this very mechanical view of the human body. They view it as a machine, and when they hear those sorts of noises, kind of reminds them of if a machine was making noises like that, something can't be right. That people think of in terms of wear and tear uh, on the joints. No, no knee pain, normal physical function can exhibit uh, particularly a fine type of crepitus. And there's crepitus that can kind of, it's thought to originate from various compartments in the knee. Um, people always think about trying to take stress off the joints uh, to unload them and, and to kind of preserve them and things like that. We have lots of evidence suggesting that uh, physical activity, strength training uh, in particular can markedly improve symptoms over the long term, um, even if there's some short-term exacerbations. Consistent training with appropriately dosed stimulus can improve pain and physical function uh, over the long term. And so it's progressed gradually over time. That's the best way to preserve uh, a knee, uh, knee, or, or really not just the knees, but any joint uh, health, joint function for the long term for the rest of people's lives. So, in short, uh, when it comes to you know routine crepitus in the gym, uh, the best things you can do are probably to continue training. There's relatively few instances where I would say somebody should stop training because of it, 